Hello everyone, I'm Ray Ein. This week we travel to central Illinois for a dove hunt with Mr. Mike Weller of Shudwell Farms. And after we return from the field, we'll show you how to cook those doves. I travel to central Illinois over to Mike Weller's farm, a place that I've had a lot of wonderful hunts. And I go uh, several days earlier before the hunt just to uh, set up and uh, run camera on the doves coming into the field to check out Mike's uh, dove management program. Mike raises sunflowers, as you can see here, and he has open areas. He leaves the sunflowers standing, plenty of area to set up to shoot. His field is all configured for, for dove hunting. It's a beautiful morning, a nice sunrise, and you can already see all the doves uh, coming into the area. Look at the doves flying, coming in in the morning. Now, interesting point here, and you'll hear me say it later, Mike does not allow any morning hunting. They don't go out to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and they leave the field before dark to let the doves come back in the afternoon, let them feed in the morning and in the evening. Now, why do these sunflowers look like this? Is because Mike sprays these sunflowers so there's no weeds or grass or growth underneath it. See the grass areas? There's a good look at the sunflowers. By spraying them, it leaves it open underneath and, and the seeds are able to open up. When they feed on them and bump, they go to the ground. See the doves on the ground right there? Mike doesn't hunt in the morning. So this morning, display of doves flying in, when the hunting season opens, as you can see them sitting here on the, on the sunflower plants, they're not bothered. So this helps to manage his doves, but it helps to keep the pressure off the doves so that they're during the old season. Here's a field. I'm just doing a wide shot. Look at the doves flying. This is a result of the type of management that Mike does. The way he plants his sunflowers, he sprays them so there's no growth under them. And then he's going to do more work to these sunflowers as well before the hunt. But right now with these seeds on these sunflowers and these open areas and these plants sprayed like this, look at the number of doves coming in here for morning. Now here's a better look at the sunflowers. See how clean it is underneath the plants? And there you see the heads of the sunflowers. And here's the open areas right here. Now he does leaves a lot of areas open. These doves can get the seeds on the ground or from these heads. So look at these sprayed sunflowers. Look at the seeds that's on here. That's a great food source for doves and other wildlife as well. Mike manages for all wildlife. But here's where it gets interesting with Mr. Mike Weller. There's your open areas between the plants. He comes in prior to the hunt and cultivates that dirt and makes loose dirt. Doves love loose dirt. And easy for them to pick and get grit and seed and bugs. Another attraction for the doves, nice turned over dirt in all the open areas. But here's the secret to Mike's success in my belief is when they go out with the combine. Now, some of these dove places will in fact brush hog, grow the sunflowers and then brush hog them. They don't do this. See how he sprayed those? See, there's the plants. But instead of brush hogging the field and leaving all the plants down and lots of grass under it, it's wide open with seeds on the ground. Very attractive for doves. Now this is Chris Weller's, uh, Mike's son. Let's see what he has to say about, about the program. We're combine sunflowers. Um, most people generally shred them. And we try to avoid that because we plant such a vast area of them. So we, what we do is in, instead of shredding them, we come in here with a bean head off of a, it's a 60, 653A. It's, it's actually a bean head. And we come in here with a combine them. Then we end up taking them and selling them. What this accomplishes is most people generally think if you shred sunflowers, then that leaves more seed for the doves. It does, but a dove can't eat that much, that much seed. So what we do is we come in here and combine them. Um, the, all, this is just for profit for us. It cuts some expenses down and we'll end up selling them. Um, but for doves, uh, a lot of this, when the seed hits the head, it comes out and it knocks it and falls on the ground, and then, then the doves can get it. Everything we do here just it helps bring the doves in so we have a better hunt for the hunters on opening day in the first week. 
there's a lot of timing involved here. It's just like this year. We've had a week week of uh, straight rain. We actually hunt tomorrow. Uh, there'll be hunters in this field tomorrow at this time, but uh, it's a lot of work. It's not only getting the flowers ready, but it's getting the crops that uh, we took out. We took, there's five different crops in this field. As, uh, we got beans, we got corn, we got millet, and we got wheat, and we have sunflowers. So we're in here six to seven times a year taking different crops out, and it's a lot of work and uh, a lot of different things. we. Hello everyone, I'm Ray I. I'm joined here by Mike Weller. We're in central Illinois for a dove shoot at Shudwell Farms. And uh, Mike, I have a couple questions for you. There seems to be a, a few people that misunderstand doves and dove hunting and, and enlighten us a little bit about, about doves and about uh, dove hunting. Well, yeah, sure, Ray. The, the bird that we hunt is the morning dove and uh, more and more often now the Eurasian collared dove, which is a little larger species that's becoming very prominent across the United States. Uh, the morning dove is a very, very prolific uh, migratory species, uh, which means that it has the ability to reproduce uh, and in large quantities year after year after year, uh, irregardless of hunters. And in fact, um, they tell us that the average lifespan of a dove is about one year. So if we didn't hunt them, uh, most of these fledglings, that's the dove of the year, uh, are not going to survive due to the uh, predation and the elements and so forth. So we have an extremely prolific species that biologically speaking, uh, we have years of data from the Fish and Wildlife Service that tell us that uh, uh, biologically uh, uh, speaking that we, can, that we can hunt these things. You know, actually there's a couple states that don't even allow uh, dove hunting, so maybe you could uh, answer those questions for us. As far as some states not having dove hunting, uh, yeah, that is true, Ray. There are a number of states out there that don't allow dove hunting at all, and there are a couple that have just recently got dove hunting. And I'll just be very blunt about it, Ray. There are um, some people out there who don't have the same beliefs as we do, and they look at the dove as a, a bird of peace, a, a bird of love, and of course I don't agree with that philosophy, but they have the wherewithal, uh, they have the money, and they have the politics to lobby against these DNRs and uh, uh, dove hunting, and, and in some states they've been able to succeed in not allowing a dove season. The fact of the matter is, it's not biological sound, and every state in this union should have a dove season. The amount of money that's spent on doving, dove hunting in terms of ammunition, uh, hunting goods that are purchased, there's a tax on that. And that tax goes back into the system to uh, benefit all of the wildlife species, the, the, the songbirds and, and all of the animals that we don't hunt. So uh, a tremendous economic benefit to all wildlife species uh, comes from the money that hunters put back into dove hunting. I would also add that uh, a tremendous economic uh, impact to small rural communities like this one uh, from dove hunting. Um, so uh, there's just a, there's all kinds of sound reasons to hunt doves and very few reasons not to hunt doves. The day of the hunt, hunters arrive early and there's always the traditional lunch. Mike's a hog farmer, he always has these pork patties grilled. It's a tradition at Shedwells, at Weller's Farms. Been coming to this hunt for many years. It's the best dove hunt that I've ever attended anywhere in the country. Great time, great time for everybody to visit. Fellowship, good food. It's really cool the way the mic sets us up so the doves aren't bothered of a morning. And you come in in the after early afternoon, we have a nice lunch, you sit around and talk before you go out to the field, and then you come back before dark. Now here's the general, Mike Weller, he's got all his hunters in, he's going to talk to them about the rules, the regulations, and where everybody's going to hunt. He does a great job with this dove hunt. He's the best, Mike Weller's the absolute best when it comes to doves. Okay? 
But I love the little trailers and stuff they use in the trucks to take the people out to the shooting stations. Now, Mikey will tell you, you know, even if you don't have your limited doves at 5 o'clock, you're coming off that field so they can be unbothered the rest of the evening so the doves can go back and feed. Okay, here we go. We're going to start our hunt. I'm hunting with Mike Weller and his daughter Morgan Weller. And after our hunt, we're going to go in and do the traditional dove cooking they've done here for years at Mike Weller's. Here we go. Morgan. I got mine. Back. Right in the road. About the doves. Get him, Mike. Ow, ow. About one o'clock. There you go. If you didn't get that one, you are fired. Right front. Oh. Nice shot. Kill it. Oh, you tail ended him. Now you're getting there. Did you see the feather come? Look, I got you, Morgan. Come up above us. hope you enjoyed this week's dove hunt with Mike Weller at Shudwell Farms. You know, with a little work and a little effort and time, you can manage doves on your property or hunting lease 
You can attract those doves and hold those doves for a great hunt. When you introduce someone new to hunting or take a youngster out on their first hunt, take them dove hunting. A lot of shooting and a lot of great action. Well, that's all for this week, and we'll see you next time right here on Midwest Outdoors.